Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AX Electronic back with the next and last video of our circuit analysis lecture series. So today we're going to be talking about another sort of phenomena that's present in these AC circuits, okay? And this is called resonance. Okay? So we're, we'll dig into more details later on, but resonance is a really important concept that's important to a lot of different fields and is really prevalent in a lot of different fields of electrical engineering and it's just something that's really good to know no matter what direction you're headed okay so having a good grip on resonance is really something that's sort of fundamental for a lot of different fields so i'm gonna go ahead and get out of your way and we can just go ahead and start talking so i gave you a little bit of an intro to resonance whenever we were doing lecture number 22 the ac power examples i believe it was the last example in that case uh, i showed you what I would call a resonant circuit. Okay, so we're going to dig into what this resonance is. Okay, so to understand resonance, let's first start off with just a simple circuit. Well, I'm going to use black. Okay, so let's start off with just a simple circuit. So we have this voltage source, we have an inductor, and we have a capacitor, and these are both in parallel. Okay, so <clears throat> We're going to get an intuitive look at these first, and then we're going to dig into the math that's behind them. Okay, so this is an L, this is a C. Let's get an intuitive look of this, okay? So let's try and figure out what is happening in this circuit in a broad sense. Okay? So <clears throat> these, two, this, these two components are connected in parallel, meaning that they're going to have the same voltage across them. But what's going to differ is their current, right? Because you can remember that the uh, current in an inductor, so let me see here, for an inductor, the current, so let me, instead of writing this out, I'll say I, for current, lags V by 90 degrees. Okay? That's for an inductor. Now, in a capacitor, I leads V by 90 degrees. So what does this mean? You know, what does this mean for us? Well, it's really easy to say, you know, it leads, it lags, this is by how much. I think it's easiest if we just sort of plot this, and then we can get a better view of what's going on. So let's plot this in the time domain, because, you know, that's that's where, that's the domain that we live in, we, so it's easier for us to understand the time domain. So if we plot this in the time domain, I'm going to plot the current through the capacitor in red, okay, and I'm going to try and draw this pretty neatly, that way you can sort of see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to draw the current through the capacitor. It might look something like that. It could look a little different, different amplitude, different phase, but it might look something like that. Now, this is this current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. Okay, so the current through the inductor is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees, or you can think of that as lagging the uh, capacitor's current by 180 degrees. And if you draw that in the time domain, what you get is something like this. Okay, so let me make sure this is IL. Okay. So this is what those currents are looking like in the time domain. Now what's interesting about this is that you can see that at any point here, the currents are just, the currents are equal, but they're just opposite, okay? So they cross zero at the same time. Whenever the inductor current is positive, the capacitor current is negative, and vice versa, okay? So they always have complementary current just going in the opposite direction. Now what's the significance of this? Well, if you think about it, if the inductor is pulling two amps, the capacitor is supplying two amps, okay, the source doesn't have to provide anything. Now, same thing, if the capacitor is pulling two amps, the inductor is supplying two amps, source still doesn't have to give anything into the circuit because they're just feeding their currents back and forth to each other. Okay, so <clears throat> what we see here is that the voltage or the voltage source is not providing any current at all. So all the voltage source sees is like an open circuit because there's nothing for it to give current to. It, it pretty much just behaves like an open circuit. So what this is called is this is called resonance, when the capacitor and inductor are tuned perfectly to where they're feeding their currents into each other. Okay, So they have the same current, just opposite directions. You can also think of this as that they have the same reactive power, but just either positive or negative. Okay, But that's you know, a little more complex, and that's you know, more than what I wanted to talk, for, or talk about right now. So let's look at a series LC circuit this time. So... If we have, instead of having these two in parallel, if we have like an inductor and a capacitor in series, well, how is this going to change things? Well, since they're in series, they're going to have the same current flowing through them, right? So the current through them is going to be the same. Okay? But the only thing that's going to be different is the voltage. So again, let's look at an inductor. 
So for an inductor, oh, I wanted red, or I want a black. For an inductor, make sure I'm doing it, the voltage leads current. Okay, so the voltage is leading the current. And the capacitor, the I'm not sure. Capacitor voltage lags the current. Okay, and both of these are by 90 degrees. Okay. And we can draw this in the time domain again. So I'll draw time domain axis. So first up, I'll do VL. So let's say VL looks, again, something like this. If we draw the voltage across the capacitor, what we'll find is that it does sort of a similar thing, right? It's just equal but opposite. Now, if these two have equal and opposite voltages, that means that if we sort of look into it from this way, if we look into it from that way, they have equal and opposite voltages always, then that looks pretty much like a short circuit because there's no voltage across it at all. Okay, so looking inward, we just see a short circuit. And again, you can just think of that as their voltages are canceling each other out, or their impedances are canceling each other out, their reactive powers are canceling each other out. Whatever it is that sort of helps you think about it and helps it stick. What happens is that whenever these circuits resonate, okay, whenever these resonant circuits resonate, okay, it's like their reactances cancel each other out. So inductive impedance cancels out capacitive impedance, and then it ends up working out just fine to where it's, it's like it's not even there at that frequency. So, so this was just sort of an intuitive explanation because I think getting a grip of what's happening here is really important before you start moving into the math. So now we can sort of move more into the math and let's see the, you know, the math that's going behind this. So let's look at a more complex example. Okay, because in reality, we're always going to have some sort of resistor involved. So this is going to be a C. This is going to be an L. And then let's say we just have a resistor in parallel with those. So we're keeping everything in parallel. Okay, so for this, I'm going to define a new quantity that really doesn't get used much, but it's still important to know, and we're going to need it here. I'm going to call this quantity Y, and Y is just 1 over Z. Y is also called the admittance, and like I said, it's just the inverse of impedance. So if you have something with a high impedance, meaning it resists a lot of current, then it's going to have a low admittance, meaning it is going to let a lot of current through, or a low admittance means it's going to resist a lot of current, or it's not going to admit a lot of current. Okay. So if we define this, then we can use uh, the formula for yn. So let's look at yn. Well, yn, whenever these two are, or whenever these are all in parallel, let's, let me backtrack a little bit. If you remember, the formula for things in parallel is, you know, parallel impedances will be 1 over z is 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 plus dot, 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 dot. Go on forever, however long you want. We typically use a simplified formula, but this is the uh, full formula, I guess. Well, what we can do is we can just say yn is equal to y1 plus y2 plus y dot, 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 dot. Okay, so this is what we're going to do here. So we're going to look at yr, yl, and yc. We're going to look at the, the admittances of all of those. Okay? So let's look at yr. Well, yr is simple. It's just 1 over zr. So that's 1 over r. Okay, so we'll just keep it at that for now. yl, well, that's going to be 1 over zl. So that's going to be 1 over j omega l. And then similarly for yc, that's going to be 1 over zc. So it's 1 over 1 over j omega c. So we just end up with j omega c. Okay, so now we can add all these things together to get our yn. Okay. So our yn, our input admittance, or the admittance that we see from here. Okay. This is just going to be 1 over r plus 1 over j omega l plus j omega c. Now, we can do a little bit of complex algebra and combine those complex terms, because these two are both complex terms. Let's combine those together. So what we'll find is that this is equal to 1 over r plus j, and this is omega c, minus 1 over omega l. Okay. <clears throat> now, we said that at resonance, there's really no reactive component. So at this specific resonant frequency, this is just going to be equal to 0. So that's what we're going to say. I'm going to say uh, omega naught c 
minus 1 over omega naught L. Omega naught is our what's called resonant frequency. So the frequency at which this circuit resonates. So resonant frequency. You can also think of that as the frequency at which the reactances cancel each other out. And for this to be resonant, this has to be equal to zero. Well, what we can do is that we can manipulate this sum. We will get omega naught C is equal to one over omega naught L. Then we get omega naught squared LC is equal to one. Omega naught squared is equal to one over LC. And then this gives us omega naught, let me make sure that's an omega, omega naught is equal to one over square root of LC. And then if we want our frequency F naught, instead of angular frequency, we can just do one over two pi square root LC. Okay. Now this is the frequency at which the circuit resonates. And that means that this is the frequency at which it's like those reactances aren't even there. So we can just get rid of that inductor, get rid of that capacitor. And all we're left with is that resistor. Okay. So this is something that's pretty important. So this is called the resonant frequency for this specific circuit. And like I said, this is really useful because we may not always want that inductor or capacitor there. So like we said, at this resonant frequency, it's like that inductor and capacitor aren't even there. But if we move above or below, then they're going to start playing some effects. Okay, they're gonna start having an effect on this circuit. So I'm going to, I already did some of the hard math for you. Let's plot the input impedance of this. So let's plot Zn, the magnitude of the input impedance, because it's complex. Let's just look at the magnitude for now. What we'll find is that this reaches a maximum of R at its resonant frequency, F naught. And then above or below that, that in input impedance drops. Okay. Now let's look at this intuitively. If we have a really low frequency, this capacitor is an open, so it's not, it's not even there. But that inductor is like a short. Okay, So that inductor is going to short, uh, short any current across it, and we're not going to be able to read any voltage here. Okay? So the input impedance, it's a minimum. Right? Now at a really high frequency, this inductor is like a short, so it's, or an open, so it's like it's not even there. But that capacitor is like a short. So what you see is that um, either the inductor or the capacitor starts shorting your input. Okay, and this isn't good most of the time. Typically, we want to just measure across the R. So it, whenever we're not at this resonant frequency, what's going to happen is that our input starts getting shorted. So we're going to reach our maximum, uh, we're going to reach our maximum input impedance, which is equal to R, at this resonant frequency, and then above or below that, it's going to start decreasing because it's in parallel with a uh, smaller impedance. Okay, so this was for the parallel. Let's look at the series. So if we have another source, let's say we have a capacitor, an inductor, and a resistor, because like I said, we're typically always going to need a resistor here. So C, L, and R. What we're going to get is we're going to want to look at Zn. Okay, so we're going to want to look at Zn here. So we can say Zn is equal to Zc plus Zl plus Zr. So this is Zn is equal to 1 over j omega c plus j omega l plus r. So again, let's just combine those complex parts. So what we can do is we can combine these to get, well, let me... Put the r first. So we get r plus j omega l minus 1 over omega c. And again, for this to be resonant, this has to be equal to zero. So following that similar path of you know math that we used previously, we can once again get that the resonant frequency for this circuit is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of lc. Okay. And you can derive that on your own. It'd probably be a good exercise too, but I'm not going to do it here just to save a little bit of time and focus on more of an intuitive explanation. So intuitively, at a really low frequency, okay, what's going to dominate in this circuit? Well, at a low frequency, the inductor is like a short. Okay, so it's not really going to have much effect on like the current that's, being, that's flowing. The resistor is fixed, okay, so it's not going to change. But this capacitor 
is like an open circuit. So it's not going to let any current through at all. Let me use red for this. So this capacitor isn't going to let current through. And because that capacitor isn't letting current through, no current is getting to our inductor or resistor. Okay, so that means that our input impedance is going to be at its maximum, okay, because that capacitor looks just like an open circuit. Now, at a high frequency, at a high frequency, this capacitor is like a short, so it's just going to let things pass. But this inductor is like an open, so it's not going to let anything pass. Okay, so once again, at a really high frequency, nothing is getting to that resistor. So let's plot this, or let's plot the uh, input impedance for this again. So once again, we're going to have F here and then the magnitude of Zn. And what we'll see is that it'll look something like this. Okay. Now, the minimum that it reaches, it's going to reach this at F0, or the resonant frequency. Now, what is the value of that minimum? Well, you should think about this a little bit. This is the equation that we have. Okay. Above or below a certain value, we're going to have a complex part, and that's going to increase the magnitude of our input impedance. So that should tell us that at the resonant frequency, whenever this is equal to zero, our input is just equal to R. Now, above or below this, it's going to increase, and then here, it's pretty much just approaching infinity. So at DC, this is just an open circuit. At a really high AC, this looks just like an open circuit. Okay, so say we want to like transfer current to this resistor, or like we're measuring a voltage across this resistor. The maximum amount of current is getting to that resistor when this input impedance is at its minimum, right? So that means that we're going to get the maximum amount of voltage across that resistor at the resonant frequency. Okay. And then once again, resonance is also the point where we have only real power. Right? Because we said those reactive parts cancel each other out, so their reactive power is canceling each other out. Right? They're just storing their power and then dumping it back into the other into, into the other one. Okay, so it's just going back and forth. So <clears throat> resonance, like I said, is useful for a lot of different applications. So let's look at a couple of examples of resonance. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, start off with just a couple of you know sort of simpler examples. Okay, because resonance really isn't too bad once you get sort of the hang of things. So we're going to calculate F naught here. So if we calculate F naught, let me give you this circuit. We're going to have a source, a 10 millihenry inductor, a one microfarad capacitor, and a 10 ohm resistor. So 10 ohms, one microfarad, and 10 millihenrys. Okay. <clears throat> so what is our resonant frequency? Well, let's just use the resonant frequency formula. F naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. Make sure I show that that C is in square root as well. And then all you got to do is plug in the inductance and the capacitance. Okay? And that'll give us a resonant frequency that is equal to 1.59 kilohertz. Okay. Now you can plug this in for yourself. Like I said, I, you know, this is too complex math to do just on paper. You need a calculator, but you can plug this in for yourself and verify this answer. Now, what if I asked you, what is the input impedance? Okay, so what is the input impedance at this frequency? So if I asked Zn at F0, what is this equal to? Well, remember, for Zn at F0, it's like that inductor and capacitor aren't even there. Okay, so the inductor and capacitor aren't having any effect. And so if we just take that inductor and capacitor out, all we're left with is that 10 ohms. So that means that our Zn at the resonant frequency is just 10 ohms. Okay? Now, if we went to a really high frequency, what would our Zn be? So let me say, if what is Zn at a really high F? Well, at a really high F, okay, this capacitor looks like a short circuit. This inductor looks like an open circuit. This resistance is just 10 ohms. So it's like we have a short in parallel with 10 ohms. And a short in parallel with 10 ohms, or like a zero ohm in parallel with 10 ohms, just gives us zero ohms. So it's like a short circuit. Okay. Now, what is our Zn at, let's just say, zero hertz at DC? Okay, well, for this time, or for this one, the capacitor is like an open circuit. Okay, but the inductor at DC is just a short circuit. That 10 ohms is still 10 ohms. So we still have a short in parallel with 10 ohms, which is going to give us another zero ohms here. Okay, so you can see that at the extremes, 
this becomes a short circuit, and it's at the resonant frequency that we reach its peak of 10 ohms here. Okay, so this is again the that parallel uh, LC circuit or a parallel resonant circuit. Let's move on to a different one. So let's again calculate F naught, and then we'll analyze a little bit more, or yeah, we'll analyze a little bit more across the way. So we have this input, a 100 micro ohm inductor, or not 100 micro ohm, 100 micro Henry, a one nanofarad capacitor, and this resistor. So one nanofarad and a 10 ohm resistor. So F naught. Okay. So F naught is again just one over two pi square root of LC. Now for this one, it is 503 kilohertz. Let me move over so you can see that. 503 kilohertz. So this one has a higher resonant frequency. Now, what is, again, Zn? So Zn means looking in from the source. What is Zn at F0? And you don't even have to calculate F0 for this. This is just sort of a conceptual question that you should be able to give pretty easily. So at F0, it's like that inductor and capacitor have no effects. So it's like they're just shorted. They're not affecting the circuit. So all we're left with is that 10 ohms. So now what's Zn at a high frequency? At a high frequency. Well, let's look at this again. So we're at a high frequency. This inductor isn't going to let current through. So it's like an open circuit. This capacitor is like a short circuit. This resistance is 10 ohms. So we have an open in series with a short, in series with 10 ohms, what's going to dominate is that open circuit. So this is either you could write infinity ohms or you could just do open. Okay, so I'm just going to say open. It's like an open circuit here. Now what is Zn at 0 hertz, or the lowest frequency you could possibly have? Well, at 0 hertz, then this is a short, so it's going to let things through. Capacitor isn't open, and this resistor is still just 10 ohms. So at zero hertz, what's going to dominate? Well, you have an open in series with a short in series with 10 ohms. So that open is going to dominate again. So you can see whenever we move to extremes on either side of the resonant or on either side of the resonant frequency, what we're going to get is that we are going to get an open circuit and it is at the resonant frequency that we reach the minimum, which is equal to this value. So at the resonant frequency, the inductor and capacitor are both like short circuits and they're just letting stuff straight through. Okay. So now let's move on to our final example. So for our final example, we are going to say what L, so what value of inductance is needed, oh, needed, let me rewrite that. So what value of L is needed to make F naught equal to one megahertz, or one megahertz. So this is the circuit that we are given. We have a source, we have our L, we have a one picofarad capacitor, and an 8 ohm resistor. So L, one picofarad, and 8 ohms. Okay, so we know the resonant frequency is 1 megahertz. This is what we're wanting, so we're designing for this resonant frequency. And we can just use this formula. F0 is equal to 1 over... 2 pi square root of LC, okay, because we know C, we know 2 pi, we know F naught, we can solve for L, okay, we have one equation and one unknown, we can solve for L. So this will end up giving us, you know, so make sure I actually solve this one. So what I'm going to get is 2 pi F0 is equal to 1 over square root of LC, and then if we square both sides, 2 pi F0 squared is equal to 1 over LC. And then let's move L over here. So L times 2 pi F0 squared is equal to 1 over C. Divide both sides by 2 pi F0 squared. So divide by 2 pi F0 squared. And what this is going to give us is L is equal to, okay, so this is going to be L is equal to 1 over 2 pi F0 squared C. Okay. And then you can plug in the values for that, and that'll give you an inductance of approximately 25 millihenries. Okay, so if we have a one picofarad capacitance, 
then we need 25 millihenries to sort of cancel that capacitance out and make this thing make this thing resonate at one megahertz. Okay. So then let's you know analyze this just a little bit more. So what is Z in at F naught? Okay. Well, we should know this by now. Z in at F naught is just going to be the resistance, 8 ohms. So in this case, what is zero, Z in at 0 hertz? Well, at zero, hertz, or at 0 hertz, the inductor is a short, capacitor is an open, so that open is going to dominate, so it's an open. So Z in at 0 hertz, or not 0 hertz again. If we do high F, then this is going to be equal to an open as well, because that inductor open circuit is going to dominate. Now just as a final little task, let's plot let's plot this VR. Let's plot VR versus frequency. Okay, so if we have this frequency here, this is F, this is VR. Now our center frequency is one megahertz. And what we're going to see is that, let me make sure I just note this here, this is VS. What we're going to see is that if we plot the value of the voltage across the resistor versus frequency, then what is going to happen is that it's going to look something like this. Right? It's going to sort of it's going to roll off. Okay? Now, I could have drawn this a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to draw it in a linear scale here, so it didn't quite didn't quite go below zero, so it just sort of touches it and gets closer as time goes on. But you can see that this is the value of the voltage across that resistor versus frequency, because at a high frequency, we're going to have that open circuit, so no current flowing, so that means no voltage across the resistor. Same thing at a low frequency, we have an open circuit, so there's going to be no current, so no voltage. Now, final, final question. What is going to be the value of VR at the resonant frequency? So if you were to look at this circuit here, at the resonant frequency, you know that the input voltage is 8 ohms, okay? so <clears throat> what you can do is you can sort of manipulate this and really just sort of be able to conceptually say, well, at the resonant frequency, that inductor, that capacitor, it's kind of like they're not there, just short circuits. So <clears throat> at the resonant frequency, the value of the voltage across the resistor is just Vs. So that's what I'll put the, here, Vs. Okay, and that's the peak value of the voltage across the resistor at that resonant frequency. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really encourage you, if you haven't seen my previous videos, to go back and look at them. I explain some of the prerequisites for this material in more detail. If you made it all the way through to this, to the end of this lecture series, then really, thank you. Congratulations. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that you enjoyed these videos as, uh, as much as I enjoyed making them, because really, I, I had a blast making these videos. I, I love being able to teach people and share the knowledge that I've gotten so far during my engineering uh, curriculum. So. Really, if you've made it all the way through to the end of this series, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I've got some new material in the works that I'm currently working on. I'll probably make an announcement about that soon. Uh, but again, I don't want to spoil the surprise here, so you're going to have to ring the bell, get that notification whenever I uh, post that new video. Subscribe again to get that new content. And Otherwise, I'm Aaron Carmen, and thank you for watching.